Hey guys! This week's how-to series is filmed in Arnhem Land at the beautiful Willoughby Station. Tony will be discussing the pros and cons of AGM versus lithium batteries. If you like the teaser of the scenery up in Arnhem Land here, be sure to subscribe as that episode is actually not set to be released for a few weeks yet. Yep. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our how-to series. Um, today we're going to talk about batteries. Um, I'll just put it out there. I'm not an auto electrician, I'm not a mechanic. I've just learned from uh, some good some good decisions and some bad decisions we've made around batteries and we've been through our fair share of batteries and as most people will do um, traveling anywhere in Australia um, as soon as you're off the bitumen you're gonna you're gonna hammer those batteries. Um, we have upgraded um, this trip so we've been on the road for six months now and uh, we upgraded um, our house battery to lithium uh, from uh, iTech World in WA and we also upgraded um, our AGMs in our camper trailer to lithium as well so I'll just explain why we did that um, and go through some pros and cons general um, train of thought for me is if you get 12 months out of a starter or a secondary battery under the bonnet you're doing well so we put in uh, 120 amp hour battery into our secondary um, under the bonnet and pros and cons is they say lithium doesn't like the heat um, iTech World have told us that that it can handle the heat and it's designed to be under the bonnet they've given us a 36 month warranty so um, really good warranty probably almost better than an AGM warranty where we see mainly see them around that 12 to 24 months depending on the quality of buying uh, weight difference um, we've got 120 amp hour lithium here uh, it's weighing in just a bit over 10 kilos um, and whereas if you had an AGM 100 amp hour which is the same physical size uh, you'd be looking at anything up to about 28 29 kilos so um, huge difference in weight not going to make a huge amount of difference over under the bonnet when you're driving a land cruiser like we are um, but certainly makes a difference in the camper trailer when you when you're running dual batteries I'll just talk a bit about discharge and or well, usage. Um, your, your, what you can actually use within a battery really varies um, depending on the type of battery you've got. With the um, AGM, it's quite a consistent usage, um, and from from fully charged down to probably 40%, and then it drops off pretty quick. With the lithium, you get a lot more at the higher end. Uh, but once you go below probably 75-80% it drops um, very fast but you have a lot more power usage at the top end so uh, to give you an example we run a management system in our camper trailer uh, where, we, uh, where we look at percentages and lithium will be lucky to use 5% overnight so we're still at 12.9 to 13 volts overnight if we had AGM in our camper trailer we were running two 100 amp hour AGM batteries and we're running a 60 litre fridge a uh, couple of Sirocco fans some charging stations and some LED lights so very little and, and with our AGM we would lose 10 to 15 percent of that battery overnight so we would be down to 12.2 to 12.4 volts uh, opposed to the lithium where we're where we're still at 95 percent and and we're still at 12.8 to 12 to 13 volts so to give you an example on this trip we're running um, a 80 80 um, litre uh, was it a Waco, Waco sorry um, and and we've only able to been able to run that at a fridge temperature which we run at about um, zero to one degrees 
and a freezer compartment we've in only ever been able to get to minus four with a 100 amp hour AGM battery without it going flat after a couple of days. We have a 80 watt solar panel on the roof so the solar panel is feeding in during the day and when we're driving we've got a DC to DC um, charger. So with the lithium uh, we're running at minus 12, sort of 10 to 12 um, and 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 it's just continuous. We never have any um, any issues with power. We have upgraded to a uh, Red Arc um, DC to DC charger. Before we had a CTEC. Um, nothing wrong with the CTEC. It worked well, but probably not designed to be under the bonnet because of the heat. Whereas we've mounted our Red Arc um, right behind our grill, so it gets lots of airflow when we're driving. So as far as cycles go on the uh, lithium batteries, uh, manufacturers specs say that if you if you use 80% of um, the battery before it's recharged, then you'll get 4,000 cycles. If you're only using 20% uh, of the usable energy in that battery, you'll get 8,000 cycles. So albeit they cost a lot more, but in actual fact. In the long run, they are a cheaper battery if they can handle the uh, if they can handle the roads that you're travelling on. And as far as um, an AGM battery, uh, manufacturers for our last AGM um, battery, uh, manufacturers' recommendations were uh, for 50% usage of that battery, you're going to get 500 cycles. Um, I don't reckon we've ever got 500 cycles out of um, out of an AGM battery. An AGM, a cheap AGM might be costing 300, a, a real high quality one might cost you 500. Um, iTech will sell um, the lithium that we've put in uh, and they, uh, they were on special at $8.99. So it's not, it, it is more but for what you get and the life that, that they are saying that you're going to get, it's a lot better. When you're charging the lithium, uh, if you're going from a, a discharge of whatever your management system is set up to cut them out on, I've I believe recommendation uh, or manufacturer's recommendation is 30%. Um, uh, so you've got 70% usage. Um, you'll find that your lithium recharge a lot faster than the AGM. AGM are very slow, very long to um, charge up, whereas the lithium charge very fast. And you'll find if you discharge that lithium for whatever reason, um, and I'll give you an example shortly, uh, if you turn it off, it will more than likely rebound quite a bit before you have to put in the charging cycle. So to give you an example of that, we have a inverter in our camper trailer and we have an inverter in our Land Cruiser. Uh, so we can charge um, uh, 240 volt um, appliances as we're traveling like computers and drones and things like that. And we, we put a 300 watt uh, inverter into the vehicle and have no problems with it draining the battery however in our camper trailer it came with a very small inverter which drains the battery a lot faster after a certain point it's like it overheats and then just sucks the battery dry um, and so when you have when you have that with AGM it takes a long time to catch up when you're using lithium it's a very short time if it's overnight for an example and you turn turn everything off in your camper then by the morning it's already recovered somewhat put your solar out put your genie out whatever plug into power and uh, and it'll charge up fast so to give you an example of that we had our inverter left on yesterday it drained our batteries um, we've got two 120 amp hour batteries in our camper trailer and 
by the time I had uh, four or five hours of sun going through our solar, which is 180 watt solar panel um, today, uh, then we were charged uh, back to 80%. So it works really effectively and very fast. Just a quick summary of, um, of with the lithium compared to the AGM. Uh, we, we really rate the lithium. Um, it works really well with our Red Arc 25 amp DC to DC charger in the, in the vehicle. And we just have solar on our camper trailer. Um, it's lighter. Yes, it is more expensive by, you could say, up to three times more expensive but you've got a lot more cycles out of it and you've got a better warranty system so uh, and you've got more usable power in a, in a 120 amp hour battery than you would have if you had the same um, amperage AGM battery so it's hands down for us it's, it's been a good move if you're uh, if you're like us and you're looking for hassle free off the grid camping then lithium certainly the way to go. ITEC, guys at ITEC World in um, WA have been really good. Um, you just tell them what you want to run and they'll pretty much fit it. And as long as the physical size of the battery is going to fit your area that you've got to work with, um, I really recommend it. Uh, we have, we've, we carry a, a one KVA generator. Uh, we've pretty much made that redundant now since we've gone away from the AGM because they hold the usable energy um, is a lot higher, even though the amperage might be the same. Hey guys, well that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope um, hope that made some unanswered questions clearer. Um, if you've got any comments, um, poke them through and we'll help you out if we can. Otherwise, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.